Hello folks, thanks for joining me. The electrical restoration is finally complete on this beautiful Shanti Clear 2D570 from the mid-1930s. I thought it would be helpful to go back and share some of the pictures or photos of the restoration before and after, as well kind of talk to some of the milestones along the way. As you see from the photos that I'm sharing, that this radio is in very, very bad shape. And I tell you, I wouldn't normally tackle one in such bad condition, but this Chanticleer radio is very unique. Uh, there's very few examples that I've been able to find. So I think all the time and effort's definitely been worth kind of bringing this thing back. It's a great piece of history. In my mind, probably one of the most significant milestones was the speaker itself. Uh, for those that followed the prior videos, if you recall, I had recombed the speaker, but then I had problems with the voice coil, so I ended up having to recreate a brand new voice coil and then recomb this 5-inch speaker. And I was successful. Another significant milestone was really just the prep work that went into the chassis itself. As you recall from the photos, I mean, this thing was covered with rust, uh, especially on the top side. The underneath side was not too bad. Uh, it really only took a couple hours underneath the chassis to, to get it in presentable order. But here are just photos, again, I'm sharing of the radio back together, all the parts and pieces. Uh, I tell you, I restuffed that, uh, you know, the can capacitor that you see there as well. was able to cut it open. Got the new electrolytics there. Got the dial pointer back on and aligned in the proper direction. The tuning condenser really turned out well. It was just a big, big mess. Here are some photos underneath. Again, you can see you know, the rust and some of the legacy parts and pieces that I had to work with. Something else that made this restoration kind of unique, there's really no schematic for this particular radio that I could find online. I found various schematics for the same tube complement that I was able to use, but none of the parts and pieces or the wiring or the circuit design happened to be the same. Another milestone that's notable, in my opinion, was the actually recreation of the mica mole capacitors and labels. They turned out well. Here's just a look at the safety cap that I installed. There was a paper capacitor installed. Again, I put the appropriate uh, safety capacitor in, a close-up of the fuse holder itself just to add some additional protection, and here's the power resistor arrangement along with the 1N 5408 diode This used to keep the uh, voltage for the tube heaters appropriate. A few more photos of the underneath side of the chassis. I think these do a better job of depicting the, uh, the mica mole uh, capacitor reproductions that I made. Again, I think they turned out well. There's a few tweaks I would make if I had to go back and do this again, but uh, overall I'm satisfied. I did take time to make sure that I've got all the values facing toward me. So if I'm back in this radio or someone else uh, in the future, uh, it would be easy to go back and find out what value capacitors are actually inside the uh, mica mold tubes. If you take a look at the picture-in-picture picture here, I'm actually checking my tube heater voltage. Again, I used the 1N5408 along with the power resistors to drop the voltage. So you probably see 3.99 volts or 4. That's less than the 6.3 desired for the particular tube that I'm checking. You actually have to multiply those results by 1.57 on an analog meter to be able to capture the true RMS voltage. There's a great article on the VintageRadio.com site, and I'll post a link to that that goes into the theory and why. I'm pleased to have the electrical restoration complete on this beautiful Shanti Clear 2D570 from the mid-1930s. Stay tuned. I'll produce some additional videos early spring on the cabinet, and we'll get this thing back together and have one finale. <laughs>